So for um, number 27, we want to take R3, which is this orange section, and then we want to revolve it about OA. So OA goes from here to here, right? And we want to revolve it like, when we revolve it, it's going to give us a, a disc that goes like so, um, where the lower part of the disc touches this line. And actually, this line here, um, this line here is just the line y is equal to x because it's just a straight line, right? That goes, it goes one, it grows one in the x for every one in the y. Therefore, it's just a line y is equal to x passing through the origin. Um, so that's the, the lower part of the disc. And then the upper part of the disc, it touches this curve, um, the fourth root of x. So what we're doing is we're summing up, uh, we're summing up all these discs here that would go like this. Uh, across the x-axis, right, to to revolve the whole thing. Um, so we're we're summing up these disks across the x-axis, right, like this. Therefore, our integral it goes from the point zero 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 to the point one on the x-axis. And now we just have to think about how we're going to express our disk. Um, so our disk is given by our disk here is given by a bigger circle. And then we're going to remove from it a smaller circle, right? We're going to remove from it a smaller circle to give us the ring that we are looking for. Maybe I'm going to um, I'm going to draw that again so that we can see it in a way that's a bit clearer. So um, I should have drawn this in a different color. Yeah. So here it goes like this, and then like that. Okay. So. This here is basically the area of this ring is A1 minus A2, where A1 is the area of the bigger circle, right, with radius R1, minus the smaller circle that has radius R2. Um, so let's figure this out. So A1 is the bigger circle, um, and we can see here that the size of the radius, it just basically goes from the origin all the way out to the height of this function, right? It's just the value of that function that gives us the height of the radius. And the function is the fourth root of x. So a1 is just pi times r squared. So r is x to the 1 fourth. That's the fourth root. And then squared. And a2, similarly, is just going to go... Um, and let me erase this. So similarly, a2 is just going to go from the origin. But now, just up to the line, y is equal to x, right? That's going to be our height. So a2 is just going to be pi times r squared, so pi times that height, which is just x squared. Therefore, we have that our biggest, um, our radius, sorry, our circle, a1 minus a2, or rather our ring, a1 minus a2 is equal to pi. I'm going to put that outside. And here I have, let me square this. So when I square it, it's just x to the uh, 1 half. And then minus, when I square this, is just um, x x squared, right? That gives us our area. So once we figure out the expression for this ring, and we can see that this ring changes as a function of x because um, the width clearly changes, right? So when we get up here, it's actually going to be very, very thin because these two lines are um, are close together. And actually, I didn't draw that very thin, but hopefully you guys can um, understand what I mean. So let's integrate this. Uh, so I'm going to put pi outside, and then I'm integrating a1 minus a2. So I have x to the one half minus x squared and all of this um, times dx. So uh, what I'm going to have here when I integrate, this is equal to pi. I'm going to put it outside and that's x to the um, three halves times two thirds minus x to the power of three over three. And all of this evaluated from zero to one, uh, which is equal to pi. So I'm just going to put my upper boundary. So that's two thirds minus 1 over 3, minus 1 over 3, right? Uh, and then I I don't need to put the lower boundary because it's just going to go to 0. So pi uh, 2 thirds minus 1 third is just pi over 3. And there you have it. That's um, R3 revolved about the line uh, OA. That resumes uh, our volume.